And when we're looking at intern, when we're looking at environmental analysis, one should never forget the internal environment. This is the environment you have the most control over. You have the most control over your company. It's, that's the easiest thing for you to change. It's very hard for you to change the micro, even harder for you to change the macro. So you know you have the most sphere of influence over the internal environment. Now, when looking at the mi micro environment, it is, as we said, the company, and there's loads of different theories, and I always like something with a bit of alliteration. So I'm going to focus on what we call the five M's of management, because I think that helps for looking at a micro, an internal, sorry, environment. So we might look at the first one there at the top, the money. How much money do we have in our company? Do we have the resources, <laughs> funnily enough, for what's going on in the news at the moment, do we have the resources to meet any issues that are going to happen? So as we know, Carillion, a large company have gone bust. They only had 29 million in the bank, but they needed over a billion pounds to be able to fulfill the contracts that were coming up. So do we have the monetary resources? We all know that Apple last year made the most profit and have the, one of the most reserves of a company sat in their bank just waiting to be done. Some could argue while it's in the bank, it's not doing anything. It's not working for them. So that's bad management, bad internal environmental issues. Very generic there, we use the phrase men, but we just mean our labor. So what skill set do our labor have? Do we have some of the world's best designers or you know creators? Do we have... Do we just have a vast amount of people so we could really put our workforce to do any kind of job because of how many we have or as i said the skill set they have we look at the materials so what raw materials do we have who are our suppliers do we have very good supply links so we can get anything anywhere and therefore that's a real benefit for us as a company so that's part of our internal analysis do we have a, a gap in it do you know are we um, focused on very few suppliers and is that quite dangerous for us because if we have very few suppliers they have they can control us a little bit better. Then we look at the machines. So once again, you know, what physical kit do we have in our company? You know, are we a garage with a really good exhaust bending machine and therefore it's very valuable that we can do that and other garages can't do it? Or, you know, do we have loads of computer equipment or loads of POS things for supermarkets? And then we look at the method. So these are our systems and processes. These are still valuable things, such as when Tesco is going to a bit of financial trouble recently, it sold its club card section. So its data collection arm, it sold that off. So it's purely a process of what they do. You go, do your shopping, scan your club card, they collect the data on you. But that has value as well in itself. So giving that's a method, that's a process that is still valuable to somebody. So the way you do things as an organization, does that have worth or does it need changing? So these are just some of the factors as the internal analysis. As I said, there are plenty of other theories around there. I just like it because it begins with M.